as much of a hoot as it'd be to take a suborbital ride, it's not really all that great for doing, you know, space stuff. Sure, you can float around, but can you play catch or race around the ship? No. Current suborbital flights just don't last long enough. They boost you up just above the official limit of space and you hang out there for a few minutes. I'm sure it'd be one hell of a ride, but it wouldn't be real space travel. Now, there are some benefits to going suborbital. Uh, since it doesn't require as much fuel, it's generally going to be cheaper than going to orbit. Furthermore, its basic description, Pearl Tin Can Containing People Into Space, is easier to accomplish. This means that, for the foreseeable future, suborbital flights will be a lot more comfortable than other options. None of that makes that 5 minute suborbital flight last any longer. Happily, we don't have to go to just above the atmosphere. We just have to fire people straight up, but you know, way up. You'd be up there longer, maybe an hour or two, and wouldn't take all that much fuel to ensure that you landed back at your original launch site, or for the really brave, halfway around the world. So it'd be kind of nice to have a few hours to really soak in existing in a weightless environment. Five minutes of zero G is kind of a tease. Five hours is better. But to tell the truth, even five hours isn't really all that long. Now when you start to consider the things you can do once you actually get into orbit. Of course, there's a bit of a gap between what could be done in orbit and what can currently be done. Nowadays, it's a week at the International Space Station at best. Worse, you get there when they're changing over crews, so it's essentially like everybody's moving apartments in the same building at the same time. In space! And you're just in the way. Plus, the ISS isn't all that great. Anyways, it's loud and it's cramped and there's not a whole lot of creature comforts and it smells like ass. On the upside, space? While the ISS as a tourist destination doesn't sound terribly appealing, I would definitely go if given the opportunity. I'd want to learn everything I could about that station, asking questions and poking and prodding at every button I saw, which probably wouldn't help with that whole being in the way of astronauts going about their very important jobs problem. Sure, they would be nice and polite and professional about it, but I'd be so giddy from the excitement that I really wouldn't know when to stop. I'd have a lot of time on my hands, and sure that time would be nice, but even 12 hours of just floating and staring at Earth or space isn't all that much fun, and the prospect of another 60 hours isn't helping anything. There's just not much for a civilian to do aboard the ISS other than stay out of the way, look out the windows, and occasionally chat with an astronaut. Boring. At least compared to the kinds of crazy crap you can get up to in orbit if you really try. So let's move past what can currently be done and imagine something not entirely infeasible. Let's say there's this new hotel. Now this isn't some low-end, older, used parts from government type station. This baby was designed from the ground up to be a space hotel. Large windows, relatively spacious interior, hot food with variety, maybe even run by somebody who has some history in hotel management. I know. We should get that guy who used to do budget suites. We know he's got some experience in managing a hotel and it'll be cheap budget suites but in space yeah even i'm getting a little over that one regardless of who's running it it exists all you have to do is sign up pay stay for a week and come back down people who've done it said it's really nice not five star by earth standards but the very fact that you have to add that modifier by earth standards should give you some idea of the futility of such a comparison now let's say that you've had a good life you've achieved success in your endeavors you got a loving family good social life after much consideration, you decide on saving up for one big vacation. You, your family, all spending a week at History's First Space Hotel. Everybody is predictably excited, with on that first day people literally bouncing off the walls. At first this is because you're in space and you hadn't figured out which gate was down yet. And then you, well, really I would be using that as an excuse to continue bouncing off the walls. But by the next morning, that initial adrenaline rush would have worn off and your family would be taking their time with things. It's a very relaxed sort of atmosphere on a space station, which is odd given their current atmosphere. Despite the dangers, your eldest child, perceptibly bored, concocts a devious plot. He's going to spin the younger right there in the middle of the hall where he can't touch the walls and film this. Then watches his video vomit spiral goes viral. Unfortunately, things don't go exactly as planned. That first spin doesn't really get the younger to spin quite right, leaving the older to awkwardly leap at the slowly rotating sibling in the last desperate attempt to try and get the spin that the video needs. Unfortunately, all this results in is bumps, bruises, bouncing wildly off the walls, aggravating the guests, and leading ultimately to you having to explain yourself to both your parents and the manager of the hotel. Now, I don't think most rational adults would attempt to do much more than the occasional flip or graceful spin in the viewing area when nobody was around, but we'd all be thinking about it. 
I was in charge of building a space hotel that wanted some nifty new attractions, something that none of the other space hotels had, I know exactly what I would build. Long cylindrical tube, really wide, no windows, walls, well padded. On the inside would be attachment points so you can make a sort of modular interior, and the obstacles in this interior would be rigid, sure, but soft and willowy so it wouldn't hurt if you happen to run into them. Now the walls would be thicker than usual and it has enough equipment for things like lighting and temperature control with maybe a fog machine or two thrown in for good measure. And then I'd invite everybody to come play laser tag with me. In space! Right, if I was really ambitious, I wouldn't have just the laser tag arena. I'd have the pool to relax in after exhausting myself in that laser tag arena. That is, I would relax in the big spherical room which itself contains the big sphere of water and that is the pool. You could swim down to the bottom and back up again without having to change directions, or you could do a cannonball on one side only to watch as the wave ripples around the surface and comes crashing together again on the other side, incidentally splashing anybody who happens to be over there. We seem to be verging into larger and larger space stations, but that's okay, our imagination is unrestrained. Now the pool would need room for equipment and things like servicing as well as you know locker rooms and whatnot, and this would be an addition of course to the laser tag arena itself a rather large structure, so we'd have to consider things like you know living areas because if this whole laser tag arena in space idea is going to take off, we're going to need at least two dozen people or so up there, so we're going to have to consider kitchens and eating areas as well as you know, some uh, open areas for general relaxing and space lounges, if you will. But we shouldn't view the tremendous size needed for such things as a setback. You see, we can easily imagine that the pool would have a variety of windows in it, in addition to some locker rooms and a snack bar nearby. But the thing is, some of those windows wouldn't be windows at all. They'd be clear tubes of awesome connecting the pool to other parts of the space station. Now you may be thinking to yourself, this is all getting a bit out of hand, but if the station was tetrahedral or some other such shape, it would be very easy to connect all the various parts together. Now that sounds pretty nice, but it really isn't all that great. Yeah, neat pool, windows, clear tubes of awesome, but you only mentioned a snack bar? Yeah, see, that would be a problem, but it's one that's easily solved with a larger hotel. It wouldn't have to be much bigger, just enough to accommodate a you know, full-grown bar. Now, we wouldn't want that bar attached on any old how. No, for us, the only bar worth having in space is a bar in the center of the pool. Now, that pool would likely have to have some direct connection to the space station already to hold whatever hoses and wires were necessary for cleaning and circulation. Now, if the pool is large enough, it would be easy to insert a sphere of air inside that sphere of water, which is the pool, and that would make servicing the pool's mechanisms that much easier. Knowing this, it would take no great leap to imagine a pool so large that it could have a sphere of air big enough to support a fully stocked bar bartender with room for several guests down there in the center of the pool. You know, now that I think about it, you probably shouldn't drink and swim too much. You could have lights and music, and it's not like you'd have to stay in the bar to drink all the liquids come in pouches anyway. Now, if we ever do get to the point of having major league space laser tag battles and nightclubs and pools, it won't be anytime soon. So until then, we can content ourselves with some pretty awesome fish tanks. Now, some of what I've just said may seem a little outlandish, so we need to have some perspective on what's actually possible. Consider a space station at Earth Moon Lagrange Point 1. From the exterior, it would look like little more than a long hollow cylinder, and it wouldn't be until you started getting closer that you would realize it's real size. It is hollow, but the interior appears to be habitable, with the ends being covered up by some massive windows. Now, the walls would be pretty thick as well, and they would house things such as kitchens and lounges and living quarters. The entire center of the station would be devoted to the universe's greatest restaurant. So there you dine, suspended on the wall of this slowly rotating cylinder as water fountains arc gracefully through the air around you. The moon would shine all silver and gray through one window, and from the other would come the gentle blues of Earth. To get any real sense of gravity from spinning a ship, it's got to go either very fast or be very big. The greatest restaurant in the universe compromises by being sort of fast and kind of big. You wouldn't even get one full G from it, but there'd be enough that you wouldn't have to eat your food out of pouches anymore. With care, you can even use grown-up tools like knives, forks, and cups without lids. I think that, at least for the stuff we've imagined so far, going to space will always be a bit of a thrill. It doesn't matter how certain you are that the ship you're in will work just fine, you know that outside that window in your happy little spaceship is death, certain terrifying death. 
Now, for most folks, this will be plenty of thrill for them, but there will always be those freaks and those weirdos always pushing the edge, and for them, no ordinary thrill will ever cut it. It doesn't matter how extraordinary that thrill is from our perspective, but constantly seek out new excitement in, in this imagined age of space pools and laser tag and vomit spirals, there's only one sport for them. Interstellar long jump. In space! Set up is simple. One end of the space station is a platform where the athlete starts from, the other end of the space station is another platform where the athlete hopes to end up. Given the appropriately hyperbolic name of interstellar long jump, there's really only one way that this sport can be played. Leap for the far platform without aid of feather nor rocket pack. Don't miss. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If there was anything that sprung in mind that you would want to do in space, be sure to let me know in the comments. Um, other than that, i got some links down below, and see you next time.